Welcome back to day 12 of our journey through the Psalms. Today, Psalms 56 to 60. And today I want to read to you from Psalm 56. Of course, the setting of the Psalm, the historical circumstances in which it was written, uh, are told to us in the title. This is a mechtim of David when the Philistines captured him in Gath. So this is when he was escaping from Saul and he thought he would go and hide in the land of the Philistines where he believed that uh, Saul would not pursue him. But when he got to the land of the Philistines, the lords of the Philistines uh, immediately recognized him as being David, the one who had slain Goliath, their captain, and they were now intent on killing him. And uh, he then had to pretend madness so that the king wouldn't kill him and then run for his life and escape. So he was in tremendous danger at this time of his life. And he he, he describes that danger in this psalm. He talks about how they twist his words and their thoughts against him are for evil, that they, they gather together, they hide, they mark his steps when they lie in wait for his life. And, uh, and then he, he makes this statement in verse 8. He says, You, my God, you number my wanderings. You know, have you, have you felt like in your life you've been wandering? Like just aimlessness, fruitlessness. You don't know what you're meant to be doing. Well, if you're walking with God in your life, actually it's not aimless and it's not fruitless. God uses the seasons of our lives for his own purposes. He knows every step you are taking and he's with you. You number my wanderings. It's a fascinating phrase. I mean, the, the whole thing of a wandering is that it's not numbered, it's not planned, it's it's not. It doesn't have a determined focus to it. There's no purpose to it. It's just wandering. And yet here we see in the greatness and goodness of God in our lives, even what we think are, are just aimless wanderings in our lives are not. They're in his hand for good. You number my wanderings. You put my tears into your bottle. Every tear you've cried, the Lord has it stored up. He's not forgotten. Are they not in your book? You know, the book of Revelation talks about books that are going to be opened on that great and final day. And this is one of the things that's written in those books is... The tears we've cried, the prayers we've prayed, the hardships we've we've been through, they are recorded. Uh, They're important to God. And then David says, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. And let's not miss an obvious point here that Um, Firstly, you've got to cry out to God when you're in trouble, when you don't know what to do. You feel like you're wandering around. There's danger. There's struggle. You have to cry out to God. So how is your prayer life? Are you honest with God in prayer? Do you cry out to him? Do you pour your heart out before him? Because he is a refuge for his people. But you must cry out. David says, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. God is a God who answers prayer. And then I don't want you to miss another kind of embedded truth in that, that it is okay to pray for yourself. Sometimes we get such a pious sense of prayer and holiness and religion that We've got to always be praying for the poor or we've got to be praying for our parents or for praying for other people, praying for the peace of the nations. Or, Yes, those are good things, but you can't read the Psalms without this jumping off the pages. It is okay to pray for yourself. And in fact, you must pray for yourself. You must cry out to God for yourself, for your own situation, for your own heart and for your own circumstances. This I know. So he says, then my enemies will turn back. Now, how do I know this? This I know, says David, because God is for me. 
I want you to know this morning, my friend, that God is for you. You have to know that. Somehow that has got to get into each one of us. That God is good and He is endlessly powerful. That He has His purposes in the things that you have gone through, your sufferings. There are purposes to those things. And in all of it, He is for you. And of course, this applies to us who are, it, it applies generally to the whole human race. God loves the world. He, he's, not, he, he's not wanting people to suffer. He, he doesn't want that. He takes no delight in the death, even of the wicked. God is good. But this is especially true of those who believe. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, God has adopted you as his child. He is for you. You know, the Bible says that if you come to God in prayer, like we're talking about this morning, crying out to God for your circumstances, you must believe that He is, that He exists. If you come to God, you've got to believe that He exists. You've got to come with faith. And you must believe that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He is for you. This I know because God is for me, says David. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. So here's the next thing we see. What does it mean to trust God? Here's what it means. It means knowing your Bible and believing the promises of Scripture. You know, it is good to have spiritual experiences and encounters with the Holy Spirit and to have prophetic words or to even hear an audible voice of God. These are wonderful things when they happen, but that will happen very seldom in your entire Christian life. What God wants from you is to get to know his word and to trust his word. To David says, I will praise his word. I will speak highly of his word. And that's, of course, why we are going through the scriptures together. This 365 days through the Bible. It's important because it's here where we find the promises of God. It's here where we receive confidence for life and peace through all circumstances. And this is the next point David makes. He says, I've put my trust in God. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? I mean, here are people who are wanting to take his head off. And yet, when he thinks of the promises that God has made him, when Samuel came, when he was a, a young boy and anointed him with that, that oil and, and said, you are going to be the next king of Israel. That was a promise he had from God. That was the word of God to him. And when he remembered the word of God, he, he suddenly didn't fear the Philistines who were threatening him and wanting to kill him. He knew God would get him out of it. And my friend, God is going to get you out of it. Because he's for you. And you must cry out to him with faith in his word. And you will see the miracle that you're after. So God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.